Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all here. And welcome to another wonderful academic year at RIT. Yeah! It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the inauguration of the 2012-2013 academic year with our traditional president's address to the community. I am Jeremy Hafner, provost and senior vice president for academic affairs. As we begin, please stand and join me in singing the national anthem, followed by our alma mater. Dr. Keith Jenkins, associate Pro, uh, provost, professor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Wishful thinking on my part. <laughs> Department of Communications College of Liberal Arts will lead us in the singing. Keith? Who oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hello. Together stand, creating good with mind in hand. Inspired to learn till life is done. As teachers, learners, all are one. With pride in our diversity, a spirit of community, we are the men, the women of the future here at RIT. From RIT our course is set, we celebrate our promise kept. A life of living you have taught, let new horizons now be sought. Woo. Thank you, Keith. What a wonderful rendition of our national anthem and our alma mater. Our ceremony this morning is enriched by the presence and expertise of our professional sign language interpreters and real-time captionists. We thank them for their important work in facilitating access to communication. Let's give them a round of applause. I'd also ask that you join me in welcoming any members of our Board of Trustees who have joined us this morning. Let's give them a round of applause as well. So welcome, colleagues, to a start of a new and hopefully exciting academic year. Summer is a time for reflection, recreation, and eventually preparation for work to come. It's also one of those rare times available for many of us to fit in some leisure reading. And one of the books I greatly enjoyed was the biography Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. It was a fascinating story filled with Steve's interests and innovations bubbling from intersections of technology, 
design, and liberal arts. And I'm on a personal first name basis with Steve. I just want you to know that. So I call him Steve all the time. There are clearly parallels between what we do here, inspiring students to create and innovate, using technology in new ways, and getting them to think critically about why things work or sometimes don't work. And after reading the book, you certainly are left with the notion that Jobs was a great visionary who has built a leading and lasting company. But I also was left thinking that Jobs, the person, was, well, just not a nice man. And frankly, if I can use this, he was a jerk. Uh, I hope Bobby Cologne's got my back with the Apple lawyers on that one. <laughs> now, Wozniak, Wozniak, on the other hand, is pure RIT. He's a gem. In any event, I look forward to new ways in which RIT will lead the way in innovation through bringing together new mediums and new ideas during the year. Later this week, at the Convocation for New Students and Families, a series of speakers, including Dr. Dessler, Dr. Cooper, Mr. Taylor Deere, and I will pledge to parents that their students have chosen that their students have chosen made the right choice for starting their educational career at RIT. We will pledge to our incoming students that RIT is committed to providing them an outstanding, rigorous educational experience both inside and outside the classroom. We will share our commitment to prepare this new generation, one that has read more in their lives on digital screens than printed paper, to think carefully, and analytically about the world and the challenges that surround them. To become successful, contributing citizens during a time when our nation is striving to redefine itself yet again on the global stage, critical thinking is never more important than it is today. It is a great responsibility, but one which we are prepared and excited to take on. Our first step in delivering on these pledges begins with this morning's speakers, the chairs of the Academic Senate and Staff Council, the President of Student Government, and our Vice President and Associate Provost for Diversity and Inclusion will each have about five minutes to welcome you and briefly outline their vision and plans for the upcoming year. When they are finished, Dr. Dessler will deliver his presence address. So let's get started. I'm pleased to introduce our first speaker this morning, Professor Paul Tiemann, Chair of the Academic Senate and Chair of the Computer Science Department in the B. Thomas Golisano College of Information and Computing Sciences. A brief little story. Last year, I introduced him and totally botched his last name. And I sat down next to him and said, Paul, please forgive me for messing up your last name so much. And he, without missing a beat, he turned to me and said, Apology accepted, Provost Hefner. <laughs> Paul, the floor is yours. On behalf of Academic Senate, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2012-2013 academic year. The summer certainly has flown by, and I cannot believe we're starting another academic year. When I think about the upcoming year, I can't help but to think about the lyrics from a famous Bob Dylan song, for the times they are a-changing. Um, no one can deny that the times are changing at RIT. We are starting our last fall quarter. Virtually all of our programs have been converted uh, to be delivered under semesters, and we are using a new student information system. These are just a few of the changes that we've seen in the past year. So maybe instead of for the times they are a-changing, we should be saying for the times they have been a-changing, or maybe even better yet, for the times they continue to be a-changing. As I think back to the work that Senate did last year, and I think ahead to the work that we will do this year, it's really humbling to think that the work, that this work will have a profound and lasting impact on RIT. I think now more than ever, it's vital that everyone participate in shared governance and help shape the future of RIT. It is certainly much better to be involved in the shaping of the policies and procedures that will guide the Institute in the future, rather than asking yourself a few years down the road, why did they decide to do it this way? 
Although we've come a long way in a relatively short period of time, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done to get ready for our first term under semesters. I think the most important piece of work that the Senate must deal with this year is the Senate Charter, or as it's more affectionately called, Policy B-2. Uh, the Senate gr spent a great deal of time last year discussing B-2 and presented a revised version to the faculty for approval. Of the 796 faculty eligible to vote on B-2, only 117 cast a vote. Of those, of those, 67 were in favor of the proposed changes and 50 were opposed. Although a small majority of those who voted approved the revised policy, the policy requires a two-thirds approval of those who cast the vote. In order to encourage a broader discussion of B-2, the Senate will be holding a number of meetings in each of the colleges during the fall quarter. The purpose of these meetings will be to explain the rationale behind the proposed changes to B-2 and solicit input to help Senate develop a version of the policy that will be endorsed by the faculty. I encourage every one of you, faculty and staff and students, to participate in these meetings and to discuss your concerns with your senators. With any luck, we can have a revised version of B-2 in place by the start of the winter quarter. So in closing, I want to wish you all a productive year our last under the quarter calendar. I am sure this is going to be an exciting and memorable year. And now I'm pleased to introduce Julia Lizzo, the Chair of Staff Council and Director of Financial Operations in the Wallace Center. Julia. Thanks, Paul. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to what promises to be a very busy academic year. With conversion right around the corner, the governance group will be deluged with policy changes that are related to the calendar. I believe Kathleen Martin told us last week there are over 30 policies that were, will require changes during this year. In the midst of all of this frantic work, it's my hope that we still take the time to do the rest of the work that is at the heart of the shared governance system and that is to be a catalyst for positive change within the RIT community. While in the process of writing up my notes for today, I saw that RIT made the list of great colleges to work for. But I was a little disappointed that we only were recognized in one of the 10 categories, and that was benefits and total compensation packages. Don't get me wrong, the benefits are great here. I'm very proud to be an RIT Tiger. But there are 10 categories. In reviewing those categories, I also compared it to Staff Council's plan of work and realized that if we can be successful this year, perhaps we can help RIT get recognized for many of the other categories on that list. Staff Council and our executive committee meets regularly with the Assistant Vice President for HR, along with the senior administration, to help provide a staff perspective on issues and policies to those groups. We plan to work with HR to continue their commitment to manager training, specifically training related to managing and coaching employees. But we also to plan to work with professional development to consider offering workshops to employees related to crucial conversations and related to staff advocacy to encourage staff that they are their best self-advocate. These efforts could result in a better perception of the professional and career development programs at the Institute and perhaps get us recognized in one of those categories. Further on our plan of work is to look at working environment issues. Everything from all of the new construction going up on campus to things like promoting a bicycle friendly campus and even issues related to smoking on campus. And of course, parking. Improvements in these areas may elevate the institute related to the workplace categories on the Chronicles list. Additionally, Paul and I have already begun to have conversations around creating a more collaborative spirit within the shared governance process, and I'm confident that we'll work with Taylor and SG as well. That, along with working with senior administration on the message that's conveyed about the potential changes related to the productivity or cost containment teams, could impact the leadership categories on the Chronicles list. 
Lastly, although we rated well enough to make the list with regard to compensation, the other two categories in that grouping are job satisfaction and respect and appreciation. Staff Council will have conversations with both HR and senior administration related to a more consistent implementation of policies across campus. We believe that when all staff are treated fairly and consistently, there is an increased feeling of job satisfaction. In closing, we have a much larger plan of work for Staff Council this year, but our number one priority is to help the administration make this an even greater college to work for in the future. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Taylor Deere, President of RIT Student Government. Taylor. I told Julia to take a picture of me. I still got to prove to my friends that I do something with this position. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> no, in any case. Here, give me. <laughs> Julia, give me, give me one that, like, like really power stance, you know? Just kidding. Well, as Julia said, uh, my name is Taylor Deere, and I'm the president of student government. As you may already know, we are excited to announce that we now support over 290 clubs and 11 major student organizations. Due to last year's leadership in student government, we are, are in an amazing position. As a result, this year we have the opportunity to take our organization to a level that it has never reached before. Today I would like to explain our vision for the year, as well as some of the bigger goals that we have set in our sights. First, I think the easiest way to describe our vision would be to break it down into two parts. First is our internal vision. This will deal with revamping the culture within student government, and it will give a direction to our team when they're setting goals on this year. I believe that we as an organization cannot reach our full potential unless we have a culture that will support the ambitious goals that we have lined up. So we have put forth a considerable amount of time to try and figure out how we can promote accountability amongst our team towards progressing our overall organizational goals as well as the personal goals that we have set for ourselves. Our student government target is that we want to become the most approachable and visible organization on campus. We want students to feel comfortable coming into our office and telling us our ideas to make this campus a better place. We aim for student government as an organization to become as extroverted as the members that comprise its ranks. And we are actively going to broadcast what we do to, so that students are always up to date on what we do. This will be essential in our efforts to help students learn about key issues like how to transition into the semesters and how it will infect, affect them through the year. The second part of our vision We'll deal with broadcasting a consistent message externally to all the MSOs and student groups on campus. The message is that we want to be seen as the central hub for student innovation. We want students to come to us over any other group at RIT with innovative ideas that impact the student populace. We want to establish this as our role amongst the student body. The vast majority of students that go to the school have no idea what we do or why they would go to student government and we want to fix that. Student government has so much to offer students. We want to make sure that they know about it so they can see us as a valuable resource rather than just the governance body. We also want to expand student government's leadership role within the community. We are going to make sure that students are involved as they can be with RIT's long-term initiatives. We want to always be one step ahead and we want to make sure to involve and inform students as much as possible early on on these long-term projects. We believe that this will give students a feeling that RIT really values student input and that they care about their students. Lastly, I want to finish with some of the bigger goals that we have set up for ourselves. One project that we're really excited about is our Ask SG system. This will give students 24-7 access to the ears of student government by use of their cell phone. Students will be able to text in questions that they have about RIT via their mobile device and we'll, we will be able to give an answer on our computers in our office and send it right back to their cell phone. We are, we are also going to use this system to gather student opinions on current topics that are affecting the community and relay that information back to them so that students can also see what other people's opinions are on the matter. This, gives, this system gives us a great, great opportunity to become even more accessible to students and we are really excited to get it going as soon as we can. Also, our, our T3 bus system that goes to the city of Rochester will expand to earlier hours this year. 
we give chance, students a chance to go downtown to Rochester starting at noon. We have made it one of our priorities to get the word out about how students can utilize this bus because we know how great of a tool it can be for students to connect to the city. Another initiative that we're taking on this year is informing students of the upcoming transition into semesters. For some, this will be a huge change, and we need to let students know what to expect next year. We're coming up with creative ways to spread this message so that we can reach as much of the student population in the most effective way possible. As you can imagine, we're extremely excited for this year. And I believe that we have all the right cards in place to allow us to take hold of this organization and make it the best it has ever been, and I look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce Kevin McDonald, the Vice President and Associate Provost for Diversity and Inclusion. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new academic year full of promise and expectations. You know, as a world-class institution, RIT has grown to recognize that research, knowledge production, operational, and academic pursuits benefit tremendously from the full engagement of diverse viewpoints derived from a variety of lived experiences and ways of interacting with and interpreting the world. As an enlightened academic community, we recognize the value of boldly pursuing full inclusion as a central component of our values and our approach to each other and the world around us. In that spirit, our attempts at making excellence inclusive brought forth a number of positive results last year. Led by the tremendous strategic planning efforts of the Division of Student Affairs and the Colleges of Liberal Arts and Applied Science and Technology, Academic and administrative units embraced our inclusive excellence framework and attempted to meaningfully integrate it into various aspects of their organizational functioning. Under the capable leadership of Future Stewards Program Director, Najoni Chow Garcia and faculty members Jason Yonker, Jeff Burnett, and Roger Duby, our senior leaders participated in a historic Native American Advisory Council meeting on the sacred grounds of the Onondaga Nation in an effort to continue building strong relationships with our Native American community and to explore ways to better serve our Native American students. Thanks to the Division of Enrollment Management and Career Services, we saw significant growth in freshman enrollment by underrepresented student populations, women, and international students. And the most recent Noel Levitt student survey showed that significant progress was made in student perceptions of our institutional commitment to underrepresented populations. We saw incremental growth in the numbers of our women faculty, and the colleges of liberal arts and applied science and technology made significant hires of Alana faculty. Our campus community came out in record numbers, close to 2,500 people to support our expression of King's legacy speaker, Dr. Cornell West, poet Joshua Bennett, and the incomparable Garth Fagan Dance. And this academic year, we will work collaboratively with the departments of economics, music, English, history, and the E. Philip Saunders College of Business to welcome economist and former Bennett College president, Julianne Malveaux, the diverse vocal sounds of three Mo tenors, and the insightful poetic words of the one and only Maya Angelou to campus. But while last year presented a number of opportunities for celebration, one area warranting increased attention is the area of underrepresented faculty retention. With last year's formation of the Alana Faculty Advisory Council and their analysis of trends impacting underrepresented faculty at our institution, this year will focus on further analysis and recommendations that the council and senior leadership believe will positively impact faculty retention at RIT while also creating more diverse and inclusive environments. Because inclusion treasures and utilizes diversity as it builds community. Creating a culture of inclusion is not an optional exercise, but rather an indispensable precondition that enables us to capitalize on our diverse skills, perspectives, and experiences so that we can better advance the fundamental research and educational mission of RIT. To maintain the Institute's unrelenting standards of excellence, 
All members of our community must contribute at the apex of their abilities because a productively diverse community at RIT will make us better at what we do. Broader and deeper as thinkers, more effective as collaborators, more creative as faculty, staff, and students, and more understanding as colleagues and as friends. To that end, I'd like to welcome you to a new academic year full of exploration, innovation, advancement, and of inventing the future, our future. I look forward to working collaboratively with you as we continue making excellence inclusive at RIT, in the local Rochester community, and all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. With our new and more robust partnership manifested by your appointment as Associate Provost for Diversity and Inclusion, I look forward to working with you to accomplish these goals. And thanks to our other speakers this morning, your thoughts and plans add to the excitement, anticipation, and promise of the new academic year ahead of us. Before turning the podium over to Dr. Dessler, we have two short videos to share with you. They are the sixth and seventh videos in a series I started a couple years ago. Each video focuses on how faculty influence our students through mentoring them, providing them opportunities to dig deeper into their interests, and by sharing their knowledge, time, and talents. The videos this morning feature Taylor Deere from the Saunders College of Business, who you met earlier this morning, and Angela Stallone from the College of Liberal Arts. Uh, let's play the videos right now. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I'm Taylor. I'm from Buffalo, New York. When I worked on construction sites with my dad, I was really interested in the interactions between him and his workers and how they got their job done. I love figuring things out and making processes more efficient. So I thought civil engineering would be a good fit for me. But after taking a business class, I realized I could focus on the things I really like, creating efficiency and understanding people's interactions. Now I'm a business management major here at RIT. Business management gives you the tools you need to become an effective leader. It teaches you how organizations work at every level and how to develop creative solutions and make decisions to help companies succeed. Delvin I. Smith was my professor for organizational behavior and leadership. As we learned about organizational behavior, we really focused on how organizations can motivate their people so that they can improve performance to become more efficient. Dell teaches in an extraordinary way that makes complex concepts make complete sense. I absorbed it like a sponge and I absolutely loved it. My favorite project was to observe in organizations meetings and see how people interacted. Basically, I used the concepts I learned in class to analyze the group and recommend how they can increase their productivity. It's like now I have this decoder for why people act differently in certain situations. I think this is awesome because I can use it in my position in student government. It lets me look at how we all work together and where we can improve. Influential professors like Dell have given me the tools I need to hone my leadership skills. I have a lot more confidence in myself so I can take on new responsibilities and help motivate and inspire others. This will catapult me into the real world where I can create healthy work environments within companies and one day, my own business. Hi, my name is Angela and I'm from Oneonta, New York. Different cultures have always interested me. After high school, I spent a year in Brazil through the Rotary Exchange Program. I loved being immersed in the Brazilian culture and experiencing their traditions and customs. Living there inspired me to become an international studies major here at RIT. International studies focuses on different ways of understanding global situations and affairs. The faculty in my major are some of the best people here. Many of them have done amazing things around the world. They really try to make a difference, starting with the broadening of perceptions of students and letting them realize their full potential. Dr. Casey was my global studies professor. In that class, I learned about a major international crisis, the lack of clean drinking water. This struck me because I took water for granted, even though it's such a necessity for life. The water crisis is a growing issue for people around the world. And I wanted to know more. So I talked to Dr. Grebinger, who I heard had a lot of experience with these types of issues in South America. His passion for helping developing countries inspired me to co-found the Wells Project at RIT, ultimately bringing clean water to those who don't have access to it. We wanted to do something big, but the water crisis was such an intimidating problem. So we started by raising awareness around campus. 
Then, in 2010, when the earthquake hit Haiti, their water contamination problem became that much worse. Haiti became our number one priority. We began fundraising and collecting donations, which we sent to help give relief. We wanted to do more for Haiti, so we continued our efforts in raising money, and eventually we raised enough to build a well this summer in the village of Maki to provide clean drinking water. Although the club is still in its infancy, we hope to make a profound difference in the lives of the people who need it. My professors at RIT helped me realize the potential I have to make a difference. I can take on any problem I'm passionate about. I am proud that my work can help save lives around the world. It gives me great pride when I see these videos knowing that our faculty and staff are so committed and caring for our students. I think it really captures what RIT is all about. If you're interested in seeing other videos in the series, you can find them on the Academic Affairs website. Just click here from our students. Special thanks, special thanks to Joe Bellavia and the ETC Production Services and the talented students working in those shops of the Wallace Center for creating and producing those videos. And now, it gives me the greatest pleasure to introduce our president, Dr. Bill Dessler. For those of you who don't know him yet, a bit about Dr. Dessler. He doesn't really like long introductions, but uh, at the risk of losing my job, I, I think it's important that you know these things about him, okay? So. <laughs> His career in higher education spans more than 30 years, and he is an international authority on high-power microwave sources and advanced accelerator concepts. Dr. Dessler earned his bachelor's degree from Stevens Institute of Technology and his PhD from Cornell University, two very fine institutions that are simply no match for us on the ice. <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are other interesting sides to Bill as well. He is an accomplished musician with a CD available for purchase on Amazon. <laughs> and he'll be signing those CDs out in the uh, aisles after this meeting. He is a founding member of the Baltimore Folk Music Society. Additionally, he has over 1,700 friends on Facebook. <laughs> and of course, he comes from a family of humanists, including his, wa his wife, Rebecca L. Johnson, who holds a PhD in psychology. She too is very active in the RIT community, most notably through her work in sustain sustainability. And you may see them biking together as they are both avid cyclists and are great proponents of alternative powered vehicles and scooters. Please join me in a warm welcome for RIT President, Dr. Bill Dessler. Way too long. First of all, welcome back to the beginning of another academic year. And I believe that the coming year will be one of the most important in the history of RIT, for reasons that I will discuss later. But let me start with a brief review of what we have collectively accomplished last year, for I really believe that last year was a great one for RIT. And I want all of you to take pride in your contributions to the rapid rise of our university both nationally and internationally. At a time when many New York State colleges and universities are struggling with a declining number of high school graduates in the Northeast and resulting lower numbers of applications and enrolled students, graduate and undergraduate applications to RIT continue to increase at a remarkable rate. And our enrollment this fall will reach 18,000 students for the first time in our history. There are many reasons for this happy situation, including the exceptional efforts of our enrollment management team to extend RIT's geographic reach. But in reality, almost all of you have played important roles leading to this result. The most recent Noel Levitt survey of student satisfaction at RIT indicates that for the first time, RIT students are significantly more satisfied with their overall experience than our graduates from other four-year private universities. That experience, of course, includes their daily interactions with all of you 
in whatever division of RIT you serve. So thanks for all of your efforts to support our students. Those efforts, incidentally, are not only resulting in increased interest in RIT among prospective students, but are also contributing to significant improvements in our current student retention and graduation rates. And as I have said often, more applications give us happy choices. We have used our rapidly increasing application base to make RIT more selective and able to attract better and better students, to increase the gender, racial, and ethnic diversity of our student body, and to grow our enrollment all at the same time. This is usually thought to be almost impossible in academia, but we are doing it here at RIT. Thanks to you. And speaking of diversity, I hope all of you will consult the multicultural calendar on RIT's homepage before scheduling events. We're, we're really trying to minimize the extent to which we schedule events on important religious and cultural holidays. Now, RIT's academic reputation continues to grow both nationally and internationally. Last year, both our gaming program and our industrial design program are ranked second nationally joining many other nationally ranked programs in all of our colleges. The Kate Gleason College of Engineering was recently ranked 27th in the world by employers. And our online MBA program was just ranked 15th. The Fisk Guide to Colleges recently named RIT as one of the 21 private colleges and universities rated a best buy on the basis of our tuition rate and the quality of our academic programs. Listen to what they said about us. Quote, RIT is the largest of New York's three major technological universities. The school is strong in anything related to computing, art and design and engineering. Photography and imaging are among the tops in the nation. And RIT is devoted to undergraduates, unquote. I could have written that myself. <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> And our faculty are increasingly the recipients of national awards for their research work, their educational innovations, and their artistic creativity. Last year, we received the largest number of research grants and had more PIs engaged in sponsored research than we have ever had, including a dramatic increase in the number of NSF awards, which last year totaled over $9 million and included the three largest NSF awards in the history of RIT. And to top it all off, Best Colleges Online just ranked RIT's Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship Programs number one in the nation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beating Harvard and some other institutions. Okay. <laughs> because of these healthy trends, RIT is sound financially, and we are able to invest in new programs and facilities at a time when many colleges and universities are retrenching. I encourage all of you to embrace this growth, even though I know that many of you have real needs for additional faculty, staff, and facilities to support your existing programs. Almost all of these new facilities and programs are being financed through the additional tuition generated by the new programs themselves, associated research overhead, and other revenues and therefore not being funded from existing sources that could be used elsewhere. Incidentally, RIT's annual payments for debt service stand at about 3.5% of our unrestricted operating expenses, a very low figure for indebtedness for any college or university, and especially one that has built so many facilities over the past few years. It is frequently said that universities that stand pat are really moving backwards. And I believe this to be even truer in the current increasingly competitive environment in which we operate. One area in which RIT has seen the greatest progress in recent years is in the quality of student life outside the classroom. With a strong student government, and almost 300 student clubs and organizations, all students can now find ways to become engaged in extracurricular activities on campus, 
and our intercollegiate athletic program has contributed to a marked increase in school spirit and student pride. Last year, our students competed in the Liberty League for the first time against some of the finest private colleges and universities in the nation, and they more than held their own, winning the championship in men's lacrosse. Our Division I men's hockey team had another successful season, winning 20 games. And our Division III, but soon to be Division I, women's hockey team won their first national championship. <laughs> All of this progress has not gone unnoticed by our alumni and friends. Last year, we received $41 million in philanthropic contributions, a record for a non-campaign year. And increasingly, this support is coming from alumni who are now noticing our progress and are more proud of their alma mater than ever before. I mentioned earlier that I believe that the coming academic year will be an especially important one for RIT. There are many reasons for this belief, but probably the most important is that this year will be our last year before we convert to a semester calendar in the fall of 2013. If you remember, when we made the decision to move to semesters, we made a pledge to our students that the change would not result in any increased costs or any increased time to program completion, and that in the year before the conversion, all students would sit down with an academic advisor to ensure that they remain on track towards their degrees. This is the year that we make good on those promises. This year also marks the first full year of implementation of our Genesis Student Information System. This system is long overdue and will enable us to work more efficiently in support of our students. I recognize that getting to this point has taken countless hours on the part of so many of you across the campus, and I thank you for your efforts. I also realize that this new system is not perfect, and that your work is not yet done, and will con continue throughout the next academic year until the calendar conversion process is complete. All I can say is keep up the good work. It will make us a better place in the end. And this is the first year of operation of RIT's new Institute for Health Sciences and Technology, and its associated College of Health Sciences and Technology. This important new unit is a result of extensive strategic planning efforts undertaken with our alliance partner, the Rochester General Health System. And I am very pleased with the current efforts led by Dan Ornt to define areas in the medical and health sciences where RIT can take a leadership position that leverages our existing strengths in other colleges at RIT. Last year, we also submitted our five-year progress report to the Middle States Commission as a result of a year-long process that involved the entire RIT community. In their response to our report, the Middle States reviewers said, quote, we commend RIT for a thorough and well-written report. The RIT community must be proud of the magnitude of change and extent of accomplishments realized over this five-year period, unquote. And I want to express my heartfelt thanks to the Periodic Review Report Committee and the entire campus community for your contributions to this process. Now, although RIT remains an institution in overall good fiscal health, the National Technical Institute for the Deaf is under stress from three consecutive years of level funding from the federal government. Now, I'm working with NTID President Jerry Buckley on ways to mitigate the effects of this situation, but it is clear that NTID will have to adapt to a much more constrained budgetary situation until the situation in Washington improves, and Lord knows when that will be. <laughs> in addition, it is clear that tuition rates simply cannot continue to increase at rates significantly above inflation. And for this reason, Senior Vice President Waters has assembled several working groups to look for potential cost savings all across the campus. He will be reporting to the campus on the recommendations of these groups at an open forum early this fall. And after appropriate review of these recommendations by our campus governance groups, I will review and approve the most workable of them, and next year's working budget will actually assume cost saving resulting from these efforts. 
One area that I expect to explore this year is the extent to which we can offer extended performing arts opportunities to our students, especially those who most desire them. As the quality of our students has increased, greater and greater numbers of them now want to augment their degree programs with experiences in the performing arts, including minors and degree programs where we are able to offer them. So I have therefore asked Provost Hafner, or is it Hefner, to establish working groups to evaluate our current programs and facilities, to make recommendations on how they can be improved and expanded, and to establish a vision for the performing arts at RIT that takes full advantage of our existing strengths in the humanities, music, theater, art, photography, film and animation, design, and other related disciplines. In this manner, I think we can truly create a performing arts program that will be unique and able to attract talented students from around the world. Now this year we will complete construction on the new facility for the Golisano Institute for Sustainability, on Institute Hall, which is our new facility for chemical and biomedical engineering, and Rossica Hall, an innovation and research center for NTID. We will also initiate construction of our new hockey arena, the Gene Policini Center, already being dubbed the Policeum by our students. <laughs> and in addition to Slaughter Hall, <coughs> to house our new Institute for Health Sciences and Technology. So we will once again be a campus under construction, but you are used to that by now. Parking, however, will be a challenge, especially in light of the construction of the Policini Center. We do have plans to replace lost parking spaces in the construction process. But during the transition period, we will need to be patient with a tighter parking situation across the campus. And some of you have already seen this because you've been relocated in your parking lot assignments. This will be a period in which we'll all have to be a little understanding and patient. But I guarantee you, we will replace these spaces. And speaking of sustainability, all of our new facilities are built to lead standards. And this year, incoming freshmen will receive a refillable RIT water bottle as we initiate our campaign to markedly reduce the purchase and use of bottled water on our campus. RIT has become a national leader in the area of sustainability, so let's all get behind our efforts to ensure that non-renewable resources will be available for our children and our grandchildren. And while RIT remains on a remarkably positive trajectory, we must be aware that significant changes in higher education could result from new delivery models made possible by technology advancements, such as those explored by institutions such as Stanford, Harvard, and MIT. We must move to ensure that RIT will be a leader, not a follower, as these new educational paradigms are developed. And for this reason, we will work with the Academic Senate, the Staff Council, and the Student Government to stand up an innovative learning institute at RIT charged with maintaining a leadership position for RIT in this innovative educational space. Several existing units will be moved into this new organizational structure, and RIT's online educational program will be coordinated and expanded through this new unit. Finally, if we are to be leaders in this space, we must encourage educational innovation by our faculty, staff, and students. And to that end, I am asking Provost Havener to ensure that valid faculty scholarly work in educational technology and pedagogy is adequately recognized in tenure and promotion decisions. Over the past five years, I have challenged you to work tirelessly to turn this fine institution into one of the world's great universities. Your commitment to this goal has been unlike any I have seen in academia over my 40-year career. I am humbled and grateful for your efforts. I know it seems like our ideas for new initiatives never stop coming and that you're all working harder than ever. But look at what you have accomplished. You are contributing to the transformation of a very good university to a great one, a very uncommon occurrence in academia. And I hope you take real pride in what you are accomplishing. In my opinion, RIT's time has come. RIT's financial health and our focus on innovation and creativity 
coupled with an increasing national expectation that higher education institutions demonstrate real added value and prepare students for global employment, has positioned RIT to move strongly upward in the ranks of the world's great universities. Let's not be afraid to take advantage of this outstanding opportunity to create a unique and wonderful new kind of university here in Rochester. Heartfelt thanks for your support and your many contributions to this special place. Thanks. This concludes our address of the president to the community. We wish you well. I know that there are college addresses going on individually, so please have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you at our convocation on Thursday. Thank you.